Hi guys! Uh, as you can see, we're not aboard Ron anymore. No. We just got back to Sweden. We are in our hometown, Malmö. It's beautiful weather. Yeah. It's still warm, really warm day. And Ron is sold. She is. She is. She, we left her in Mexico and now our next adventure starts finding a new boat. Yeah. So we thought because a lot of a few guys have been asking us uh, what type of boat we're looking for and yeah, a lot of questions about that. So mm -hmm. we thought we'll do a real-time update on that. A uh, little bit about uh, the design criteria in, that we're looking for in a future boat. And uh, of course the budget. Yeah, because that of course affects what type of boat we, yeah. we will get as well. So we have a couple of boats that we've been looking at online. Yeah. Uh, and we hope to go and see a few of them. I mean, they're quite spread out over Europe. Yeah. Uh, but they have all been in Europe and actually have some of them in Sweden. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what are we looking for? Um, I mean, to start off first, uh, a lot of people they think that we're going to get the catamaran. And I guess that would have been nice too. But uh, to sail up here in Scandinavia, which is something that we want to do in the future, yeah. it's kind of hard to have a catamaran because a lot of the marinas and harbors, you can't really access with the catamaran. They're not built for those type of wide boats. No. And, and of course the other thing is catamarans are more expensive. If we would go for a catamaran we would at least go for a 42 yeah. feet foot boat mm -hmm. and uh, they are expensive even the second hand ones. Yeah. So we just think that... There's a lot more on the market if you're looking at the monohull market. Mm -hmm. uh, the market is quite flooded with monohull boats so it's more of a buyer's market if you look at the catamaran market I don't know but it's you don't get as much boat for the same amount of money uh, as you will with a monohull so it will be a monohull and probably around between 45 to I don't know 50 -ish something we yeah. probably won't go over 55 because that will be a bit yeah. too much to handle 55 is also big yeah but around there yeah i mean i think the ideal length for us too would be something around 47 to 49 mm. feet something like that yeah. uh, because what we're looking for mainly is that we want to have more room on the boat so ideally we want to have like a stern uh, what do you say owner's uh, cabin. cabin and two guest cabins so like that means that you have a full aft cabin like yeah. the full length of the boat and you often have like what not the full length the, the oh, full width, full width yeah. of the boat and often what you call an island bed so you have like a real bed in the middle yeah. like full headroom yeah and a separate shower and toilet in, in the back of the yeah. boat and uh, yeah and two cabins up front in front of the saloon area yeah some in some way yeah and those boats are often uh, they often have a center cockpit yeah. uh, so not a, like an open transom like Ron had uh, and we kind of like the idea of center cockpit too. I mean, you have it a little more more centered. It's closed, which is nice when you have kids. Yeah. Uh, they're more secured in the cockpit. Yeah, there are of course uh, drawbacks with having a center cockpit as well. Yeah. And I think that's mainly in marinas when you're docking because you're not so close when you have a aft cockpit. Uh, it's easier when you're docking, in my opinion. Mm. So I think that's the drawback. But offshore, I think it's at least the, f the feeling of being more secure is uh, mm. more present in a center cockpit boat. Some say that you see it a little bit higher up, so yeah. you can be more uh, exposed for, for spray or so. But I think that has to do with how the boat is designed yeah. and the, the, how big it is, I think. Of course. So yeah, center cockpit two to three cabins yeah. um, okay. 45 to 50 -ish something yeah. in and length. the other big thing what kind of material are yeah. we still going for aluminium <laughs> or something else yeah and I mean this has of course to do a lot with uh, the budget that we have because aluminum boats or aluminium boats are a lot more expensive than um, GRP or glass fiber hull boats so I think with the size of boat that we want and a center cockpit, mm. buying an aluminum or aluminium <laughs> hull will be hard. We're in Sweden now. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you can say I'm aluminium. Yeah, I'm still confused. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so it will probably be uh, a glass fiber boat. Yes. Yes. Which is fine for the type of cruising that we're probably going to do. I don't see, at least in a foreseeable future, that we're sailing to Antarctica. Maybe we sail down to Patagonia, but still the amount of ice in those areas is still okay with the glass fiber yeah. hull. So. Yeah. And we're thinking going for a sloop, which means there is one mast. Yeah. Uh, but with a catch. Or, uh, sorry, a sloop but with a cutter rig in, yeah. in front. So two head sails. Exactly. And I mean, catch is not like a big no-no. No. Could be also, but like what we're mostly looking for, mainly looking for, is a sloop. Cutter rigged would be very nice. Yeah. Uh, what kind of keel? Uh, probably not long keel. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, they're a pain in marinas. They're, of, co of course, offshore, they track very well, and they're, you know, they feel secure when the weather is heavy. But something in between I mean probably not a you know like a tea keel or something like that but uh, yeah a mm -hmm. fin keel for yeah. sure and lifting keel would that be something that we could consider Is yeah it? maybe um, yeah. depends the layout yeah. and what how the rest of the boat looks like yeah. right yeah. yeah so budget budget the big thing the big yeah. question because that is pretty much deciding everything else yeah. and our budget is not uh, very big we are uh, we have gotten a lot of um, tips of boats already but there are like two and three hundred dollars uh, three hundred thousand yeah. dollars and our budget is around one hundred fifty thousand dollars or yeah. euros uh, or that's yeah pretty much the same and yeah, uh, that's I mean, we... not uh, too much because yeah we uh, we we are not rich no. And uh, yeah, no, and there is a lot of boats you can get for that amount of money on the market today. It's just that we don't. I'd rather buy an older quality boat than a newer, not so much quality. Yeah, quality and a heavily built boat. I want an offshore boat, yeah, or we like, both like, a, yeah, to like have an a offshore. solid boat. Yeah, uh, so we're looking at boats late 80s early 90s or yeah. yeah all 80s maybe early 80s too and there are quite a few boats on the market yeah um we've been looking at some uh, oysters yeah we've been looking at uh, nayad uh, some forgus some habarasis yes uh, yeah we can talk a bit more about that later maybe but trintella trintellas and uh, yeah. dutch, dutch boats boat. quality so the boats that we kind of like yeah. are Swedish boats, yeah. we like Dutch boats, yeah. we like the oyster. Yeah, oysters which, are which okay. I mean, is that? Uh, I mean, there is an Oyster uh, 55, that's a pretty big boat, but there is a one that is pretty well priced on the market right now. It sits at 165k, uh, $165,000. Maybe that's possible to get down a bit, but it's a very big boat. Uh, there's also another oyster down in southern France, a 53 foot oyster, but that's a catch. Uh, and I but think what country is oyster? Oh, they're built in England, I think, in the UK. English boat. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like all the brands that we like are pretty, yeah, are European. But um, we also, we've been looking at some Tayanas. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 we know that those are very well known in, in the US and yeah. North America. Um, there is actually a Tayana 55, also a bit on the big side for us, but it's for sale here in Sweden. Northern Sweden. Yeah, for a reasonable price. They want, uh, I think the asking price is one, $145,000. So that's within our budget, so I think we, oh, we, I think we might have a look on that boat. Um, but the Trintellas for me is probably, if we can find one, because they're not so common. Uh, Trintella is a Dutch boat, yeah. and many of them are built in aluminium, actually. Yeah. Um, There's a Trintella yeah. 44, 46, a 40, and yeah, 49, and then yeah. big ones too, but they're not so common on the market. And there is one for sale in Thailand, which yeah. has a good price, but it's very far away. It would be very expensive to go there just to look at one boat. Yeah. And also what we're thinking of is then it has already passed 
yeah, um, South, Pacific. South Pacific, which is a place we want to go to, and it's much harder to go back east from Thailand yeah. than going the other way. So these brands and boats that we have mentioned is of course not that important. What's important for us is that how the actual boat is that we get. I mean, we don't really care about brands or no. anything like that. And of course, compared to the price and what state condition it's in. Yeah. So it could I be mean, a one-off boat, so yeah. it doesn't really matter as long as it has the features that we like. Yeah. And I mean, those kind of boats that we mentioned now have that kind of th those features and design that we're looking for. Yeah. So it will give you an idea of yeah, what kind of boat we yeah. like and and, and, and also, I mean, if you have any tips of boats that we should, you think that we should look for, just send us an email or write in, down in the comments. Or maybe you have tried to sell your boat for yeah. a really long time and think this would be the perfect <laughs> boat for Mal and Yuan and uh, yeah. our little baby girl. So yes, yeah. let us know. Let us know. So now we're going to go to a marina over here called Limham, and we're going to walk the docks there and just see if there is something we like. Yeah. And if we do, we're gonna show you a little bit about those boats and yeah. talk about them. This boat has more or less all the features that we're looking for center cockpit, three cabins, and uh, a cutter rig, two head sails. It's a bit big and it's probably way above our budget, uh, but it's a really nice boat. It's a west coast boat, Nayad 49, built on the island of Iwurust on the west coast of Sweden. Same place or same area as Halbarassi, Sweden yachts, Fulgus, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of boats built in that area, quality boats. And uh, most of these West Coast type of boats have this fixed window uh, in the cockpit, which is quite nice. You get the good visibility and uh, yeah, they're really nice seagoing boats. But like I said, I think this boat is probably hundred thousand dollars above our budget so we probably have to keep looking and this is not for sale so we just found it here in the marina <laughs> one bad thing with these type of boats are that most of them have teak decks which is nice in a way but uh, if you have a problem with that it could be pretty a big job to fix it because uh, most of them have balsa core decks and if it's an old boat the teak decks are screwed in place and if you have a leak there you will have rot in the balsa core deck and that's a major job to fix that so that's something that we have to look for if we're ending up buying a west coast boat like a Halbarasi or a Nayad or something like that from maybe from the 90s we'll see what we can afford Uh, most of these boats have uh, Selden masts, Swedish brand, also good quality on the masts. Uh, this particular boat has two poles on, on the mast with two tracks, which is very nice because you can go wing on wing with two head sail and just take down the mainsail, which is pretty nice when you go downwind in the, in the trades. Do you like it? Yes, I do. This is a very, very nice boat. Um, yeah, I think we both can really can imagine to have a boat like this or see ourselves on a boat like this. Um, yeah, yeah, like like you said, you um, it has like probably most of the features that we're looking for. It's a good size. Uh, and it's very spacious inside and outside too. This is another 
another interesting boat for us. It's a Fove goose, all built in the same area as the other ones that we mentioned before on the west coast of Sweden. It's 45 feet uh, and probably more uh, within our budget than the Nayad. Uh, if you look on the looks, it's quite similar to a Halbarasi. Uh, maybe a bit more beamy. Uh, also with the center cockpit, probably has two or three cabins. Uh, what could this be? Also late, early 90 something. Yeah, mid 90s yeah. I would say. Uh, yeah, it's a nice setup, also a cutter. So two head sails, um, yeah. and there is actually a Fort Goose 52 on the market that we have been looking at. Funny thing is that we actually met it in the uh, Caribbean. We sailed, both of the owner of that Fort Goose 52 and us sailed the Caribbean at the same time and I remembered when I saw the boat and uh, that oh I recognize this boat and we met them in I saw we saw the boat in I think it was Saint Saint Lucia and Saint Bart's. Um, that one is for sale. It's on the west coast. Um, it has five cabins. So they have really pushed pu put in a lot of cabins in that boat. Uh, so yeah that's seven feet more than this one. So that's a big boat. Uh, and then it's kind of within our budget. So it's an interesting boat for us and we I think we'll go and have a look at it. It's another Swedish built boat, a Maxi, Maxi 1300, so it's uh, 13 meters long. It's built on the east coast I think, um, and it's actually the same brand as the first boat that I, ha that I had uh, when I crossed the Atlantic to the Caribbean many years ago, 2001 I think it was. This is a lot nicer and more expensive than the boat I had, but it's the same brand. Um, it's maybe not the type of boat that we're looking for, uh, because it has an aft cockpit, which is fine, but this boat has a bit different design thoughts behind the, yeah, when they built the boat, I guess. And It's an East Coast boat, and in my mind, there is some difference between the West Coast boats and the East Coast boats in Sweden. Because the West Coast is more exposed, um, rougher seas, and you can see that in how those brands are designed, like the Habarasi, the Nayad, Male, Fogus. Like they have this fixed windshield, center cockpit, uh, maybe not as fast as this type of boat, but uh, more for offshore work. This is for the Baltic, a bit more protected waters, but it's a very good quality boat, so of course you could take this boat around the world, no problem, but it's just a different design thinking behind the, this, these boats. There's another Swedish boat, Halbarasi, and I think this brand is the most famous Swedish sailboat name or brand outside of Sweden. And this model is uh, yeah, 49, Halbarasi 49, and I guess it's late 80s, I'm not sure. But it's a pretty nice, nice boat, very big volume in the hull. And I know that there's uh, quite many of these for sale. Uh, within our budget in Europe. There's one in Spain which has a hard dodger which is a nice feature that we like that is for sale for around yeah, hundred forty thousand dollars so we'll see maybe we go and have a look on that one the only thing you need to be careful with this not the only thing but one of the things that you need to check with these boats are the the teak decks like I said with the Nayad because they're screwed in place and the deck under that is with a balsa core so there could be rot so you need to check that but I like the design 
and of course Alvarez is uh, yeah, very good quality on those boats. This is a really nice boat. It would have been perfect for the three of us and then maybe four of us and guests. It's so, look how big just the cockpit, it's so spacious. And the big dodger really gives you a lot of protection when you're sitting in the cockpit. Have a huge deck, which is yeah, teak, so some maintenance going in there. But I just some one of the features that I really love with center cockpits are this like the aft deck that is pretty much always you know the whole the width of the boat uh, almost flat or often flat. So you can really use that area to lay down or you know stretch out something that I that I really want to have that's like yeah on, on, on our list of things that we like and this is such a big boat for being you know 49 feet it's so spacious we'll keep you guys updated on the boat progress Stay tuned for next week's episode as we make our last stop in California. Thanks for watching!